the next thing we want to do with our graphs is we want to actually locate some zeros. Uh, what helps us do this is what we call the location principle. Location principle. Location principle. And what this does, this states that if you, your value of fx changes, which this is just your y, same thing as saying a y, if your value of y changes signs, one value of x to the next, then there's a zero between those two values. So what that really means is if for your function that's drawn right here, um, notice up here on top, anything that's above your, um, anything that's above your x-axis, this would be where you have a positive y value. Anything that's going to be down below, that's where you're going to have a negative y value. So if you look at your table of values, you'll notice that anywhere your signs change from one to the other, you're going to have a zero for your graph. So let's look back at our example one. Um, notice we get a little sign change here on your y's. It goes from positive to negative. Well, we have that means we have a zero between negative four and negative three. <gasps> oh, hey, why well, know right there it is. Uh, no sign change here because they're both negative. Sign change from here to here. So that means we should have a zero in between x equals negative two and negative one. Oh, hey. And then you also, no sign change here, no sign change here. But to go from down to here, that's not a sign change either. If you have just a zero, that means you actually have a zero at this point. Okay, so if, you, if your y value is an actual zero, that means you get a zero right there. So let's look at um, example two here. And what we're going to do is plot this graph. So let's type this function into our calculator. Let's go back to our calculator, hit your y equals button. We're going to clear out this function. So we're going to say we have an x to the fourth. So remember, once you type in your four up here, your cursor to the right, and say minus x to the third. Cursor to the right again, and you get minus 4x squared plus a1. So here is going to be your function once you hit your graph key. Now notice this graph you have it's an even function so they're both your end behaviors are both going up. Um, all these values if you go from negative 3 to 3, 1, 2, and 3 that would give us good uh, a good graph here. So we're going to go to our table, our second table and we're going to start our, gra our table actually at negative 3. And we're going to go from negative 3 to a positive 3. So we're going to type these into our function over here. So we're going to have an x and a y. And we know since it's an even degree polynomial that our in behavior is going to look like. So let's type in our numbers. We have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Three. And going back to our table, we're going to type in these as our y values. Notice there's going to be some sign changes. There is not one here. There is one here. Is one here. Is one here. Nope, nope, is one here. <gasps> uh oh. See how many zeros we get. So we have 73. Large number. That won't be too easy to graph. 9. Then we have a negative 1. 1 negative 3, negative 7, and a 19. So we're going to plot these points. Now it's going to be difficult to graph negative 3, 73, so that we won't really be able to do. But we could graph a negative 2 up 9. Well here's 7, 8, 9. Sorry, this is not a great graph. So here's our back 2 up 9. Back 1, down 1. Then go 0, 1, which is right here. Then we go over 1, down 3. You have over two down seven, so that's here. And finally, over three up 19. Well, that's gonna be way up here. So when you draw a graph, we're gonna connect these points. Goes down, curves back up. Goes up to here, down, and continues going down. That's great. Goes up, and remember, your next point is a 319. So don't just go and draw on your graph. Uh, that'd be a three negative two. That's not a very good graph. So what you should do as you extend your graph up to, for the 3, you just never cross where x equals 3. So let me draw this a little bit better. So this goes down like so. Here is your graph. Now 
we notice that our graph actually crosses our x-axis in multiple places. In fact, we have a zero here. Here's a second zero, a third zero, and a fourth zero. So what we can do is we can find our location principle and look for any sign changes in our y. So there's not one here. Oh, hey, there's one here. Here's a sign change. So looking at our graph or our table, we can find out that we have a zero between x equals negative two and negative one. X equals negative two and negative one. So let's list out our zeros. So we're gonna say between x equals negative two and x equals negative one. So there's one of them. We have a sign change from here to here. So sign change. Again, that just means the same thing. So we have one between negative one and zero. So we're gonna say between x equals zero and x equals negative one. We're also gonna say we have a sign change between zero and one. Okay, between x equals zero and x equals one. So x equals zero and x equals a positive one. And then our third sign change, not between one and two, but between two and three between x equals two and x equals three. So that